I do apologize. Am I disturbing you? No, please. Do come in, Mrs. My name is Miss Alice de Bouvier. I'm Mr. Holmes' new neighbor. Oh, I didn't have the pleasure to... Uh, I am Dr. John Watson. Could we provide you with any assistance? Oh, she is not the concern, Watson. I'm... <laughs> then, what is this about? Oh, that child standing sniffling behind her. Get rid of him, Watson. But he is shivering with cold. And he is upset. What happened to him? Little Tom knocked at the wrong door. Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, boy, come in. Warm yourself by the fire. Can I offer you a cup of tea, Miss de Bouvier? Well, I... It is not as though we are disturbing you-know-who, are we? I suppose not. Since you are our new neighbor, it is perhaps better that you know what he's like. You're starting to worry me. Well, Mr. Holmes is relapsing. This illness that he has seizes him when he finds himself with nothing to do. He becomes completely asocial. And alas, this is a very difficult, medically incurable case. Now this must stay between us. Of course, I understand. How very sad. But there is a cure, if only a temporary one. A thrilling inquiry. Most certainly. If he refuses this one, then his condition will worsen. Oh, I am still here, you know. I didn't fall out of the window. Very well, then. Thank you, miss. Now tell me, boy, what brings you here? It's... it's my father, sir. He's missing. I... I don't know what to do. What's his name? George Hurst, sir. Missing, eh? And what do the police say? The police... They don't believe me. They say he's just abandoned me. But that's a lie. And when was the last time you saw him? Three weeks ago. He left for a new job. But this time, he was acting a bit strange and angry. Strange? In what way? He said to me, Son, I'm out on a special job. Don't you dare move from here. I think something went wrong. Three weeks? That's a long time. Well, every day I thought he would show up. And anyway, I can look after myself. Oh, what were you thinking? You and your father are both at risk. You should have come to me much earlier. I was afraid. I ain't got no family. And I've got no other place to go. If our landlord finds out that father left me, You'll throw me out on the street. Tom, you've been very resourceful. We shall be discreet. If only my mother is still here. Very well. Your address, please, Tom. 12 Dorset Street. The first floor, door E. It's in Whitechapel, sir. But I ain't got no money to pay. Who asked for money, Tom? Your case seems to be the very medicine I need. I'll meet you there shortly. Oh, thank you, sir. Poor child. Holmes, you should help him. Brave Toby. The best nose in the British Empire. Tis our home, Mr. Holmes. I hope you'll find my father soon. Ah, so that's why you came to see me. A collection of worn-out and second-hand books. George Hurst was providing his son with the best education that he could afford. Father bought all those books for me. He didn't tell me, but I know that he pawned his coat for them. Food's running low. It's already three weeks since George Hurst's disappearance. Well, I can see the preparations for peasant soup, a clever concoction for somebody with apparently no culinary skills. My mother, sir, she died when I was very young. My father told me what she was like, but that's all I have. I'm sorry, Tom. My mother left me when I was very young, too.
Hurst covered his bills ahead of time, thus providing Tom with security and sustenance. The roof leaks all the time. Father used to fix it. George Hurst's work was varied. He was evidently a hard-working and valuable hand. Old clothes, soiled and worn. Just some old things. A leather satchel, what's in it? Old clothes, soiled and worn. The old Tabard pub, North Street. I need to earwig to find out who is offering this special job. Equality for the working class. I'm glad I'm my own boss. I can complain only to myself. Or to Watson. The man who's offering that special job has a proper set of mutton chop whiskers. No, no, no. That fellow who's offering the special jobs, he never drinks alcohol. So, the man I'm looking for has whiskers and never drinks alcohol. This must be the man that I'm looking for. Interesting. A missing person. I should find out more. You see that gentleman? I need you to follow him and report back to me. All right, Mr. Holmes. They won't let me pass. I'll need to find another way. Boys from the Bruisers gang. Better keep out of their way. I can't lose him now. Interesting. What's going on in the yard? Wow, a lot of expensive stuff. Ah, oh, coat of arms. It might help Mr. Holmes. I'll make a drawing of it. Do only two people live here? I wish one was me. Bags of food. I like this ass. Wigan's tale was quite unusual. What do you make of what he found, Holmes? Wiggins did a good job. Here it is. So this man could be Lord Marsh. Huh. 
a lord who hangs around in a public house. Let's pay a visit to Lord Marsh. We'll pretend that we're interested in his charitable activities. Mr. Holmes, you have a visitor. Oh, just ask him to wait. I'm afraid that won't be possible. This young lady refuses to wait for anything. What? Father! Caitlin! <laughs> Miss Caitlin's boarding school was flooded. Everyone was sent home. As if it could smell any mustier. <laughs> My word, how is it possible that you have grown up so fast? You'll be staying. Wherever will we put you? Holmes, I'll give her my room, of course. What do you have to say, Kate? You're on a new case. A respectable lady who's being blackmailed? Or is it a love story between a prince and a suffragist? However did you guess? You will tell me, won't you, Father? We'll see, if you behave. All right, then. Have fun. I'll go and unpack. Will you help me, Mrs. Hudson? Holmes, about Caitlin. Yes? She has grown up, hasn't she? Don't you think it's time to... to tell her? To tell her what, Watson? Well, about her father. Never. Absolutely never. Do you hear me? Holmes, you were responsible for the death of her father. You owe her the truth. She is old enough now. I would lose her. Can't you see that? She must never know. Watson, is that clear? Holmes... It won't and can't happen. Come in, please. Good day, gentlemen. Welcome to my home. How may I help you? Good day to you, Lord Marsh. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. I hope we're not disturbing you. You are with your physician? Yes, this is Dr. Reuben Fisher. But no, please, I'm intrigued by your visit, Mr. Holmes. I'm glad to hear it. The last thing I'd wish is to upset the patient. Lord Marsh, can I just say that I admire all of your efforts in assisting the poor of London? Ah, uh, yes. It is a war that we must fight on our streets and now, too, from my home. You must surely have noticed those bags full of items, clothing and books for the unfortunate. That is inspirational. Um, at my own humble level, I, too, try my best to support those in need. I thought perhaps that I could be of some assistance. I don't see why not. I already have the valuable assistance of Dr. Fisher, who happens to be my personal physician. It's curious. Your face seems familiar to me, Doctor. Oddly, I'm associating it with Whitechapel? Well done. You are right. I do occasionally frequent a few hostelries over there, would you believe it? <laughs> not that I am a drinker. But there, dressed as a working man, I can approach the other fellows to see if they might be interested in a special job. A special job? May I ask what you're referring to? Certainly. Since Lord Marsh began his special education program in 1889, he foresaw that such people would need an occupation of some kind. And so, with or without education, we propose these opportunities to work with Lord Marsh. It offers the less fortunate a chance to help make London a better place. That's remarkable. Yes, indeed. In order to truly see, one requires vision, yes? But also insight. And Lord Marsh has believed this since he was a child. Oh, oh, Dr. Fisher makes it all sound so romantic. Let's close this topic. Forgive me, Lord Marsh. You're looking very pale. Might I offer Dr. Watson's assistance? That is kind of you. But I feel confident that I can provide Lord Marsh with the care that he requires. How long have you been like this, my lord? I'm fine, Dr. Watson. Don't fuss. It's only influenza. I'll be better in a few days. I can feel it already. In that case, why are you taking such powerful painkillers? Excuse me, what do you mean? Mr. Holmes is referring to the pills on your table. I'm sorry, but that's a medical confidentiality. I'm gratified by your interest in my charity. You're the first who has offered to help. 
Last year, three orphans were put through medical college. Thanks to Lord Marsh and the special education program, a great many poor people will have a second chance in life. Lord Marsh, hunting with his friends. Ah, my dear comrades, Lord Collins and Lord Harrington. If it wasn't for this godforsaken English malady, I'd be with those rapscallions right now. All in due time, my lord. John Strobridge. I've seen this name before. It was on a missing persons poster. I can't quite work it out. Do you have any ideas to the number of people who might owe you their lives? Oh, don't embarrass me, Mr. Holmes. But indeed, these people have become like a family to me. That would be a fairly large family, I imagine. <laughs> yes, the, the list would be longer than any of your short stories. As for how large, well, Fisher is the one who keeps record. Might we take a glance at the list? I regret that is impossible. It is confidential. I stand firm upon that point, Mr. Holmes. I quite understand. We'll most certainly send a donation towards your educational program. I shall take my leave then. I thank you both and I wish you all the very best, gentlemen. Likewise, Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes, do you have any news about my father? Tom, Tom, not so fast. I wanted to ask you if you remember your father mentioning anything about a special education program. An education program? No, he only talked about a special job. What's this box, Tom? Oh, yeah, I just found it, Mr. Holmes. It was ever so well hidden. I've no idea why. Well done, my boy. It could prove very helpful. This oil can also be used on weapons. Wolfjack. Looks like a military badge. A ramrod to clean a rifle. Tom, does your father own a rifle? A rifle? No. If he had, he would have shown it me. I'm sure that he wouldn't have shown it you. I need to find this rifle. Come on, Toby. It's time for you to earn your keep. Watson, I prefer to visit Lord Marsh. I'm worried about the condition of his health. Search, Toby, search. What's in there? News clippings on Lords and the education program. Why are they here? Let's compare this list with the evidence that we found earlier. This is the list of selected participants for October's special education program. According to this poster, John Strobridge is missing. Let's compare them with people from Hearst documents. This man appears in both documents. Hmm. All the people in Marsh's document are marked and dated in George Hearst's files.
This case must have been full of cartridges. There was something on the stand. There was a rifle here. George Hurst took it with him. Holmes, what are you doing here? What are you planning? A mission of my own. You must play the role of the conscientious doctor while I sneak inside Marsh's house. That's the only way of helping little Tom. How can I help you? I came to visit Lord Marsh. What for? I would very much like to see Lord Marsh, if you please. Oh, you're so clumsy. Can you please not... I have to visit Lord Marsh and offer him my services. Fisher, please allow Dr. Watson to enter. Good job, Watson. Let's see how hard to crack this safe is. Doctor, it appears that you were impatient to pay me another visit. Indeed. Will you allow me to examine you? A second opinion, so that the great Lord Marsh does not become the late Lord Marsh. Oh, well, since you put it that way, very well. Shall I retire to your office, Lord Marsh? No, please, Doctor. I insist that you stay. I shall need your assistance. Will you break anything else? I'll try my best. November 7th. This means that the meeting is planned for today. Hmm. I'd suggest that your current weakness is perhaps more than a simple case of influenza, Lord. Where might your companion be, Dr. Watson? Oh, he's busy poking his nose into other people's business, I'm sure. <clears throat> uh, my lord, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I must remind you about your meeting. Is it already time? My apologies, Dr. Watson, but we are expected elsewhere. Might we offer you a lift? You are going out. I'm not sure that's wise in your condition. I value your opinion, but misery never rests and I am needed. Well, do please take good care of yourself, Lord Marsh. I'll send you my diagnosis, Dr. Fisher. Thank you, Dr. Watson. Farewell. Watson, what are you doing at my table? I just need to check one thing about Lord Marsh. My intuition tells me that Lord Marsh is hiding something about his disease. His cough, in addition to his fever and his usage of strong painkillers, leads me to believe that he is seriously ill. Let's study it more closely. Holmes, this is no longer a laughing matter. It is just as I feared Lord Marsh is suffering from tuberculosis. You don't say. Yes, I do say. And Holmes, he will die if he is not transferred to a sanatorium as soon as possible. And yet both Lord Marsh and Dr. Fisher are doing their best to hide this fact. How interesting. But why? Why indeed, Watson. Oh, but... Oh, dear God. You don't think that Lord Marsh contracted tuberculosis while aiding the poor? How terrible. I have a commitment that I can't possibly cancel. Holmes, during my absence, please be extremely careful. This disease is highly contagious. And remember that we have women at home. Thank you, Miss Alice. Until later. I'll see you soon, Caitlin.
Where have you been? Our neighbor lent me a book. She is so kind. I think she likes you. <laughs> I doubt that. How is your investigation going? It's going. Dracula? Yes. It's forbidden reading at my boarding school. Did you know? Well, well. Here it is. Drat. I'll need to hurry if I want to find out what's going on at the forest. Father, that boy Wiggins, does he come here very often? He helps occasionally in some of my cases. Why do you ask? I'd like to talk to him. Talk to him? Father, back at school there are only girls to talk to, and they are so boring. I'm sure Wiggins has lots of exciting stories to tell about his life in London. It would be so romantic. Caitlin, you know that Wiggins hasn't had the most fortunate life. That only makes him more interesting. Oh, Kate. <sighs> I'll leave you alone now. He was killed by a shot to the forehead. My God, it's Lord Harrington's body. Hide here. The Quartermain Club. This must be Lord Marsh's cabin. This will help to dress my wound. Someone's coming, I better hide. It's almost over. Who are you? George Erst from the First Lovett Scouts, here to deliver justice. <laughs> An old soldier. How ironic. Did we refuse you on our special education program? It's true, I was refused. An old wounded soldier is useless to you. But he can still be dangerous. We hunted a lot in these woods, but I didn't expect to become the prey. I have lived a grand life without any limits set by others. I will die a happy man, so you won't see me begging, you festering wretch. Prepare to meet your maker. George, lower your rifle, please, for Tom's sake. Holmes! My, my, an almost worthy opponent. Tom? My Tom? If you've endangered my lad in any way, you will pay dearly. I assure you that Tom is safe in London with a well-trusted friend. And now it's time to end this. By all means. George, listen to me. If you're seeking an apt punishment and vengeance, killing Marsh will give him exactly what he wants. He would die knowing that he had fulfilled his life through his absolute control of it. But if you allow Marsh to live and be arrested, he will suffer a punishment far greater than your eye could deliver. His ball and chain will be the debilitating tuberculosis. It will drag him painfully and slowly to his demise behind bars. You're mad! You're both mad! Let's go and find Tom. Not just yet. See, Lord Marsh, you will die here, although not by the gun. You'll die slowly. Don't do this, George. Detective, take a look here. This is how you became sick, Lord Marsh. The beheading of your victims who were suffering from tuberculosis was what infected you. Poetic justice. 
Holmes, you cannot fully understand why we helped so many and sacrificed a few. But don't let me die like this. Just kill me now. Mr. Hurst, you have already served brutal justice to Lord Harrington and I hope Lord Collins and Dr. Fisher. Taking that into consideration, we may as well kill Lord Marsh and end the Quartermain Club completely. No loose ends. Watson. Holmes, you're playing bowls? Indoors? Not just any old bowls, Watson. Lawn bowling. Seriously? With your injury? Oh, no. Mrs. Hudson is going to murder you. Hmm. Well, that's it for now. Time to go. Would you care to join me? You're incorrigible. And where are we going, Holmes? I'm participating in the final stage of the annual tournament held by the London Archaeological Institute's Bowling Club. It's an official invitation. I'll just need to dress suitably and then we can leave. Holmes, are you really sure you want to wear that? This? Everyone dresses like this at the club. <laughs> that should be a sight worth seeing. I only hope our charming neighbor won't spot you like that. Mr. Holmes, you played very well yesterday. I'm obliged to you, Sir Charles. I play many outdoor sports. That's the key to my success. My friend Dr. Watson has decided to join me. Really? Mr. Holmes, would you like to see the first prize? A rare stone Mayan Kiche calendar. Mayan Kiche? Indeed. Their legendary king, Tekun Uman, has his statue just behind you. Although this one is a cast metal copy. That? Oh. Well, since only members may enter the clubhouse, we have exhibited the calendar outside. Please, explore. Ah, Mr. Holmes, are you ready to begin the final game? Yes, let's start the final. Congratulations on your game, Mr. Holmes. Exceptional. The awards ceremony will be tomorrow morning. See you then to receive your prize of the calendar. I trust you will be there as well, Dr. Watson? Unfortunately, I'll be unable to attend tomorrow. Duty calls. Ah, what a pity. <laughs> oh, Daddy! Hello, Mr. Bouvier. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Holmes. Well, Caitlin? <laughs> Your costume! <laughs> well, don't you like it? Oh, I do! <laughs> Caitlin, come on. Show some respect for your father. You know, Father, Miss Alice was telling me all about her travels. She has already toured the world with her own father. Your daughter is exquisite. And just to think that she was aboard the Orient Express when it was attacked. <gasps> what a dream. Indeed. She's so creative and imaginative. And that reminds me, would you allow Caitlin to visit me so that she can practice playing the piano? Very kind of you, but I decided that Caitlin should stop playing the piano. Oh, Father, why did you say that? Caitlin, we are neighbors. We'll meet again. Until then, I shall leave you with this book. Thank you, Miss Alice. The statue did it. It killed Zacharias. Calm yourself now, Sir Charles. You've had a shock. Let the police do their duty. What can a mere inspector like you do about it? You don't know anything. A mere inspector? Sure. And now here comes Mr. Holmes. Lestrade, are you here to receive a prize as well? <laughs> Very amusing, Holmes. You can go home. The ceremony's been cancelled. We've got a murder scene here. Really? And to think I only came here for my prize. I know, Holmes. I saw your name on the list of finalists. So go away. You're not going to congratulate me. What? Do you really think I'm that naive? You turning up out of the blue and then bam, a murder? There's a surprise. Oh, you're making a spectacle of yourself, Lestrade. Let's just pretend that I'm a simple uh, consultant, your humble assistant. Oh, all right then. 
A club member, Mr. Zacharias Greystoke, was killed at around four in the morning. There. Now, don't mess around. I promise that I won't, Inspector. What do you make of the facts? It's quite clear. The murderer intended to steal the Mayan calendar. He was caught by Zacharias Greystoke. He then took up the first weapon that came to hand, the statue's spear, and killed Greystoke. Then he fled, just as Sir Charles was coming out of the club. Unfortunately, we've been unable to find any trail beyond the club's wall. It's as if the murderer vanished into thin air. Well, take a look for yourself. You're still here. The statue... The iron mounting rod is broken. This spear came from the statue on the pedestal. The case is scratched and dented. Tissot watch, Swiss, 1855. This watch is valuable and old. It's been through a great deal. Zacharias's folder with some documents. These drawings represent the Mayan symbols. Money was left inside the wallet. Sir Charles, are you able to tell me in detail what happened? Ah, Mr. Holmes. Well, to prepare for the awards ceremony, I decided to spend the night here at the club. I was sitting alone at my desk when I suddenly heard a loud metallic sound and a terrible shout. I hurried outside and... Well, I found the body of Zacharias, and I swear it, I saw the statue of Tekun Uman running away. You saw the statue running? It, it was dark, but yes, I'm sure of it. It was running, and it was making the most horrible metal sound as it did so. And can't you see? The pedestal is now empty. Did you know the victim? Yes, of course. It was Zacharias Greystoke. He is... Oh, was a club member and an excellent bowler. But why was he here so early in the morning? Oh, I don't know. Sir Charles, where did the Mayan calendar come from? It was donated anonymously. We received it shortly before the tournament, with a letter asking that it be awarded to the winner. Is the calendar valuable? Uh, not really. It has historical value, of course. But to be truthful with you, Mr. Holmes, it isn't worth very much. May I go in the clubhouse? It's members only. I cannot authorize anyone unless that person has a written warrant from the police. Pieces from the pedestal. A piece of the statue's mounting rod. Traces of metal on stone. Did you search the clubhouse? What for? The murder took place outside. And what about the statue? I've no idea yet. I imagine the thief must have taken it somehow. Hmm. Right. So there were thieves, and they were very well equipped? Yes, must have been. But then there's also <laughs> Sir Charles's version, but, uh... Please, go on. <laughs> he said this morning that he was alone at his desk when he heard a shout. He went outside and saw Greystoke lying on the ground, and... Believe it or not, he said that there was no one else on the green that night but the statue itself running away. <laughs> you mean that the statue might have killed the victim? Interesting. Absurd, more like. Besides, it was dark and foggy. So, somewhat like your version, then. It looks as if Zacharias was killed the moment he approached the calendar and killed by the spear from Takun Uman's statue that jumped from its stand and escaped over the wall. Well, Holmes, your conclusions as my consultant? My conclusions are approximate to Sir Charles's testimony. <laughs> oh dear, you think the statue did it? 
Everything points to the fact that the spear was thrown from the pedestal, and Mr. Greystoke appeared not to notice the killer. Oh, indeed. The journalists will be ecstatic about your version. <laughs> I would like to examine the victim and take a look at his belongings. Oh, you've amused me at least, Mr. Holmes. Very well. I'll grant you authorization for the examination at Scotland Yard, but nothing more. The Mayan calendar. Here's a chance to have a closer look. Interesting. What are the symbols here? I'll need to redraw them. Oh, Zacharias had already translated some symbols. I could use this dictionary to translate the calendar's glyphs. They are the symbols that were drawn on the Mayan calendar. The papers from Zacharias's folder. They can help us to translate the Mayan message. Cursed will be anyone who disturbs the sacred temple. They will meet their death by the risen statue. Only the chosen will have mercy. It's not only a calendar, it's a curse. Zacharias Greystoke, a member of the club, was killed as the curse decreed. It was a powerful throw. The spear pierced right through the body. Traces of alcohol were found in the stomach. Apparently, Zacharias had been drinking before his death. The coroner mentions in his report some specific cardiac and digestive system damage. This is where the spear entered the body. The murderer aimed for the heart. The weapon must have been thrown by a strong and skilled person. It's possible that the link between Zacharias and the curse is at the archaeological club. I'll need a search warrant. These scars are old. Red eye. It looks like a serious infection. Aren't you supposed to be investigating those cases of yours instead of bothering me? Good day to you too, Inspector. I have a small favor to ask of you, a search warrant to investigate the murder at the club. No, no, and no. Since I'm without the warrant, I should find something else to do. By the way, do you know if Sir Robin is currently in town? I have no idea. And why on earth should you even think that I might know that? Well, I believe I may have solved a case about, let's say, a salacious inspector. No, it's not what you think. Nothing dishonorable happened. Go on then, take your warrant. So, he refused to give you the search warrant? Oh no, I've got it. I won't need you for a while now, Watson. I'll see you later. Sir Charles, I have a search warrant. I would like to take a look inside the clubhouse. I see. Here's the key. But I do protest. Ah, Sir Charles was once a captain in the guard. Charles Yellingham has a large family. The 50th birthday of Lord Stevenson. Interesting. It appears that the club is unable to pay its debts to the bank. A message to Sir Charles from Zacharias Greystoke, the victim. This metal globe is very impressive. Some bits are missing. Some bits are missing.
It appears that it's a part of a gold statue from Guatemala. Solid gold. It's worth a fortune. This piece has been cleanly and intentionally cut. These antiques look quite valuable. Interesting. The men who own these collections are all dead. Guatemala, 1881. I don't think this is a bowls tournament. I wonder who this man is. It's Sir Charles Yellingham, the director of the club. The photograph appears to have been faked or damaged. I'll take it. Sir Charles, you informed me that you didn't know why Mr. Greystoke was here at such a time. That's correct. I have no idea. But in fact, you do. Mr. Greystoke wrote to you about him coming with another person to visit. Ah, well, yes, that is right. He raised a scandal about the Mayan calendar, so he wanted to see me before the ceremony. But I don't know exactly what it was that he wanted, or who this other person he mentioned might have been. You have a fine collection at your club, with one disturbing thing in common. Oh, all the items are from our club members. But only from deceased members, including Mr. Greystoke. Ah, well, yes, but it is a rule of the club that all our members undertake to donate their personal collections to us in the event of their death. It appears that part has been painted over. I need to find out what's underneath. Aha, uh -huh. there's another person in the photograph. Is there anything I can do to help? Look here. There's a person with a swollen eye who was concealed within this photograph. A dispute of some kind, you think, Watson? Possibly. But it appears to me a characteristic symptom of a rare tropical disease that is found in South and Central America. South America! Brilliant, Watson! Happy to help. Is it deadly? Well... There is a chance he survived. I shall ask Sir Charles, but who knows what he'll say. I have an idea. There is only one hospital for such illness. The Hospital for Tropical Diseases. I have friends who work there. Oh, yes? Well, the chances are slim, but I'll pay them a visit. If he's in London, they would have seen him. I found this photograph on your wall. You're in it, but do you know who these men are? Particularly the gentleman with the swollen eye. Oh, him. But that's poor Mr. Albeit. He died from fever during an expedition to Guatemala 14 years ago. We were searching a Mayan Quiche temple, but everything went wrong. We were unable to enter the temple, and the expedition ended in disaster. I'm here, and here is Zacharias. And there is Bernard Marley, another member. He's over there, near the pedestal. By the way, he's the fellow who built that terrible statue. He created it, oh, must have been 10 years ago. Albeit was a club member, where is his collection? Well, the devil if I know. We never did locate it. Mr. Bernard Marley, I presume. My name is Sherlock Holmes. I have to ask you about an expedition to Guatemala. Shh, not here. It's too dangerous. I'll give you my card. Visit me there where we can talk. Mr. Holmes, you must forgive my escape at the club. It wasn't a safe place to talk. And it's safer here. Yes, better here. Not my office. I have secured my foundry, you know. Ah, reassuring. Did you know Zacharias Greystoke the victim? Yes, he was a brave friend. Such good karma until yesterday. Do you recognize the unwell man in this photograph? By Jove, albeit. Yes, that's him. The poor fellow met his end in Guatemala. He was struck down by a terrible disease. You were friends? Not really, but he was an active member and a courageous man. Too courageous. You can't fight against the Kiche gods. And what of the expedition? You were seeking a Mayan temple? Yes, the temple of Tekun Uman. Another one of Charles' stupid ideas. We found it, but there was some kind of strange force that prevented us from entering. An evil aura. It was Tekun Uman's emanation. We could all feel it. Albeit its disease worsened suddenly, there was nothing we could do. And now, with Zacharias' death, 
The curse has reawakened. After 14 years. Prophecies are timeless. Even in the beyond, there is no escape. Did Zacharias believe in the prophecy? It is not a matter of belief. Don't you understand? Zacharias was convinced that we could stop the curse by studying the calendar. What insanity. Hmm. He sent me a message. He wanted us to visit the club and try to convince Charles to remove the calendar from the award ceremony. But you didn't go. I knew Charles would refuse. Anyway, studying the calendar wouldn't help. Tekun Uman is far too powerful. Your relationship with Charles Yellingham is... Not friendly. Well, it is reciprocal. You know, most of his expeditions are failures because he is too focused on his hypothetical career to be in politics. He has political ambition. Well, that would be an understatement. He has ambitions for the House of Lords, and the club is his means of achieving this. It's also the reason for his disastrous management. But he still succeeds in finding money. I wonder how. What's your opinion on Takun Uman's statue having disappeared? I don't know, but I have nothing to do with it. Nothing. But in fact, you do. You made the statue. That's true. But it was ten years ago. You can't blame me for that. Don't you think so? After all, it is the statue that is responsible for killing. No! It's Tekun Umar. But who could imagine that a simple statue replica would be chosen by Tekun Umar? Nobody. I have to leave you now. I've got paperwork to do. And we've spoken too much. He could hear us. Tekun Umar. Well, goodbye then. Caitlin's up, Miss Alice is playing the piano. She disobeyed me. Well, Holmes, I was inspired to... Oh, look here. The postman has made a mistake. He's delivered a letter addressed to Miss Alice. Oh, he mistook 221B for 221C. Give it to me, oh, Watson. But... I can't help myself. I must open this letter. It would be easier to open this letter if I steam it. Let's prepare. Boil water in kettle. Miss Alice planned to live here because of me. I need to have a talk with her as soon as possible. Don't stop playing, Kate. I'm going to take some air on the balcony for a few minutes. I need to speak with Miss Alice first. She's on the balcony. How about telling me why you came here in the first place? Mr. Holmes, why do you ask? I hardly think that I'm accountable to you. Since you extended an invitation to my daughter against my wishes, I believe that you are. So said the father, cloaked in all his severity. My word, you almost frightened me. You won't say that. Very well. Ask Caitlin to come home now. Oh, poor child, let her play. Such insouciance. So useful for covering up disturbing secrets. And since you intend to hide the truth from her... What? We all have our secrets. You... But don't worry, Mr. Holmes. Caitlin is a sensitive child, and I like her enormously. Alice! Come back in! I can do it! See? <laughs> You're wonderful! I like to think that the feeling is mutual. We wouldn't want her to know of your secret, or for her to be unhappy. I have to go inside now. Oh, Dr. Watson, may I help you? Hello, Baird. My colleague and I are here to see Mr. Byron. Ah, Byron. Yes, he's in a bad way. You'll find him in a cubicle on the window side. We would like to ask you some questions about an expedition that took place 14 years ago. An expedition? What? What expedition? You're wrong. I've never left London. Is it not you in this photograph from Guatemala? Guatemala? Tecuna man! Ah! Ah! Dr. Baird! Come here quickly, I don't feel well! Ah! What on earth is going on? Please, calm down! I'm sorry, my dear colleagues, but Dr. Brunt is waiting to give Mr. Byron a private consultation. 
You can wait here. What should we do next, Holmes? Weren't you paying attention? We have to wait, but we'll take advantage of the situation. Our man passed by a circus. Oh, you're still here. Obviously. We're waiting for Mr. Byron. Is he not with you? No, the gentleman left directly after his consultation. Oh, he forgot to collect his belongings. Holmes, it seems that Obiet has escaped. Obviously. And he knows that we are aware of his true identity. Quickly. I know how to find him. Watson, stay alert, and you'll need to be quiet. A slot. It appears to be part of some mechanism. I'll need a dagger to work the mechanism. Another statue of Takun Uman. It can move, but a part of the mechanism is missing. Be careful, Watson, unless you want to be speared by Takun Uman. Marley dismantled these alarm clocks for their parts. We need to hurry and find out what Mr. Marley is hiding. So, Bernard Marley built a mechanical globe. This globe has space inside. It should be possible to open it. It seems you found the key to the safe. piece of a map in metal. This object evidently connects to something else. This part is in solid gold. It's worth a fortune. The statue is in three parts. Only the gold is original. Marley must have reconstructed the other two. It's almost daylight. The workers will be here soon. It's time to leave. Thanks to the information I obtained at the hospital, I can now deduce where Albeit is hiding. We know that Albeit paid a visit to an opium den, a crowded market, and a circus. He also purchased some Chinese tobacco. Let's find a place in London where all four elements are close together. Now we need to find a street name ending in OOK. 21D Brook Street. Watson, I believe we found Albeit's flat. Help! Do you hear that? Quick, we have to open this door. The door's too strong and the lock is too solid to break with bare hands.
Wilson, cover me. Watson, come here. He's behind the screen. <coughs> Our assailant escaped using this rope. No! Don't kill me! Calm down. It's over now. It's gone. You? Oh. But why are you here? You're not doctors, are you? No. Well, you're half right. Shall we remove these masks? Your true name is Albeit, is it not? You were a member at Charles Yellingham's club. Yes, I was. Can you tell us what happened here? After your visit at the hospital, I quickly returned home. I was lying there on the sofa and... And felt an evil presence in the room. An evil presence? Never mind. It's probably the fever. Or perhaps a living statue? Yes. It was one of the double statues. I saw its shadow. I believed that it was searching for me, that it wanted to kill me. It was horrible. As in Zacharias's murder, the statue came to life when its intended victim appeared in front of it. I must examine your residence. It may hold some clues. Tell us about your expedition to Guatemala 14 years ago. It was in my former life. What really happened there? You were said to have died. I was ill with a terrible fever. I asked them to leave me there. I can't remember how. I only have flashes of memory. But by some miracle, I survived. I left an eye and one arm behind. It took me time, but at last I managed to return to London. Why do you use a false name? That expedition signaled the end of my career, and my very life as I had known it. I changed my name and my address. Now I'm weak and useless and alone. I'm a walking dead man. Not for long. <laughs> Perhaps this was it. It was my curse to fade away little by little. Tekunu man's revenge. You are aware of Zacharias's murder, are you not? Yes, and quite aptly I read that he was killed with a spear. Aptly? Well, he practiced archaeology almost as though it were a sport, seeking adrenaline. Imagine his state of adrenaline when he died, him being the prey. And who would have been the hunter? Tekunu man, whoever, whatever. It'll soon be over for me at any rate. There's a locked door on the first floor. May I have the key for it? All right, but there's nothing interesting inside. This model forms a part of another, larger model. The interior seems well designed, but I cannot see it properly. It was created after the expedition to Guatemala. Albeit's wife and son, I presume. There's a little bed in a small room. It's been used. Well, it is for my son, Gulliver. After my official death, 
My wife and he left for Glasgow. Upon my return, I installed this room. So they know about you? My boy Gulliver visits occasionally. But? I wonder, what is the life of a crippled father? <laughs> they will lose me again. <laughs> Mr. Albeit, what is this? How? It's impossible. How did you find it? Answer me. Seventeen years ago, I built a model of Tekken in Man's temple. We stored it inside the club's globe before leaving for the expedition. I've no idea if it's still there. While in Guatemala, I had dreams about a missing part. A pyramid. Then, when we entered the temple, I experienced vivid visions. Wait a minute. You entered the temple? Well, yes, we did. And we found the pyramid from my visions. But I was too weak. I was unable to solve the mystery of its entrance. I failed there. I always wanted to understand why. So upon my return... You rebuilt this final part according to your visions and... Nothing. But I'm dying and at least my son will see that I did my best to complete my life's work. Mr. Albeit. Oh, you're here with your son. Yes, obviously. We have to talk with you, and it involves the police. I see. Gulliver, go across the road to Mrs. James. This is an adult conversation. Hold on just one second, please. Uh, a pygmy? As I suspected. Albeit brought him back from Brazil. You were both slaves there and you escaped together, am I correct? You are. We are companions through life to death. He's more like a brother to me. So he's the murderer, but he was merely obeying his master. Yes, I'm the one who planned the murder. I'm the one responsible. You wanted them to pay for what they did to you. True. Now I don't care what happens to me, I'll be dead soon. But Gulliver? You have to let him go. I wasn't planning to arrest you, only that we might know the truth. Although I regret that Gulliver must leave England and return to his own country. Shame, but thank you, Mr. Holmes. Father, Mr. Orson Wilde is here, and I'm going to stay with Miss Alice. What? Did you forget? Orson Wilde, he, you know, the star of American theatre. And he's visiting and staying with us. You did forget? No, no, not, not that. I, I meant you wanting to stay with Miss Alice. Yes, that's right. Miss Alice suggested it. She told me you couldn't possibly refuse. If it's really what you want... It's the perfect solution, Mr. Holmes. Don't you agree? Guess what, Mrs. Hudson? Mr. Wilde is here to study my father's character for his next play. And he won't be disappointed, will he? Father is so pig-headed. 
I can't believe it. The great Sherlock Holmes standing in front of me. I'm sure that our two brains will. Brains. Mr. Wilde, your room. Charming. <laughs> this is such a fascinating city. We need to talk. I'd rather not. You're going to be angry again. Goodbye, Mr. Wilde. Is it five o'clock already? I think I might go and ask Mrs. Hudson for some tea. <laughs> Ah, Wilde's already making himself at home. Wilde truly has a perfect disguise kit. Do actors really need all this? <laughs> oh, face powder of an excellent quality. I use the same brushes for makeup. This must be grease paint. I forgot my hat. Father? I'm just checking, um... You've got something on your face. Is it makeup? Uh, it uh, might be. Uh, Practicing my disguises, you know me. Oh, don't, don't touch that! No, no. Ah, Mrs. Hudson, with our tea. Not quite. We have a visitor. However, the lady is not so much angry as perplexed. Good day to you, gentlemen. My name is Mary Sutherland. I have come to you, Mr. Holmes, because I would give everything I have to know what has become of Mr. Hosmer Angel. Why the haste, Miss Sutherland? Mr. Hosmer Angel has disappeared, and my father, Mr. Winterbank, will do nothing. It makes me so angry. Mr. Windybank is your stepfather, surely, since the name is different? Well, indeed, I call him father, although he is barely older than myself. And your mother is alive? Oh, yes. Although I wasn't best pleased when she married again, and so soon after father's death, and to a man so much younger than herself. What is your connection with Mr. Hosmer Angel? I met him at the Gasfitters' Ball. Mr. Winderbank did not wish for me a mother to attend. He never did wish us to go anywhere, but this time I was quite set on it. Fortunately, he left for France upon some business, and so didn't have any say in it. And I met Mr. Angel that night. We met again after that and would take walks together, but then father returned, and we could no longer meet. Why was your stepfather against your going anywhere? Well, he didn't like anything of that sort. He used to say that a woman should be happy in her own family circle. Did Mr. Hosmer Angel make no attempt to see you? Well, father was going off again in a week. And Hosmer wrote and said that it would be better for us not to see each other until father had gone. After that, he stopped writing. Where does Mr. Angel live? I don't know exactly. I address all of his letters to the Leadenhall Street Post Office for collection. Were you engaged? Oh yes, Mr. Holmes. Right after the first walk that we took. Do you have your own income? I do, from an inheritance. It was left to me by my Uncle Ned in Auckland. Then you have all that you could wish for, naturally. Well, I live at home and don't wish to be a burden to my family, so they have the use of the money. Is there anything else that you can tell me about Mr. Angel? He is a very shy man. He would rather walk with me in the evening, so as to be discreet. I put a missing persons notice in last Saturday's Chronicle. Here's a copy, and a letter from him. Ha <laughs> ha, a love letter. Hmm, yes, I see. As I anticipated, this validates my deductions perfectly. What deductions, Mr... Mr. Wilde. Holmes, tell her.
A love letter? Aren't you dying to read it, Holmes? This is strange. The love letter is typewritten. Good quality paper, quite smooth. Fairly common ink, nothing special. We had a wonderful time together, didn't we, while your father was in France? Miss Sutherland only met with Hosmer Angel while the stepfather was absent. Hosmer Angel decided not to leave his signature. Let's study this letter more closely. There are some letters with typographical defects. Miss Sutherland, do you have any other letters from Mr. Angel? Unfortunately not. But I've brought my father's letter from Paris. Here it is. The stepfather's letter is also typewritten. Quite common paper with a light yellow tint. I hope it will be an obedient girl. Mm -hmm. Take my advice, stay at home. Miss Sutherland's stepfather's signature. The stepfather is trying to keep the daughter at home. Let's study this letter more closely. There are some letters with typographical defects. Both letters have typographical defects. They merit further attention. This letter has a defect. One more letter with a defect. One more letter with a defect. Ah, there's the same letter with the same defect in both instances. Another letter match with the same defects. Another letter match with the same defects. So, based on the specific defects, we could say that these letters were composed on the same typewriter. You should try to let Mr. Hosmer Angel vanish from your memory, as he has done from your life. Then you don't think I'll see him again? I fear not. Then what has happened to him? Your stepfather married your mother for her money, and also enjoyed the use of your income. But with your personal advantages, it was clear that you would not remain single for long, even with him keeping you at home. He disguised himself and reappeared as Mr. Hosmer Angel. He brought you as far as the church door and then conveniently slipped away to bring you to this conclusion in such a dramatic manner that it would leave a permanent impression upon your mind. You have been cruelly tricked, Miss Sutherland. Oh, Mr. Holmes. No, I, I, I can't believe it. But we were engaged. Oh, it's horrible to think about. But thank you for all you have done, Mr. Holmes. Holmes, you could have been more diplomatic. What is going on? Oh, my God. Go back to your flat and stay there with Kate. It's ticking. I see wires inside. It could be connected to the cover. Fancy ticking homemade gift from a secret admirer. I have two minutes to defuse it. There are wires attached to the bell and hammer. When the alarm triggers, the bomb will explode. A source of electricity for the detonation. Aha! This solenoid protects the bomb from being easily diffused. If it loses its power supply, it will close contact between the secondary chain wires and the bomb will explode. A package with explosive material. There are wires going in and out. 
It's useless to predict how they might be tangled up inside. Whew. What happened? Just a small bomb. Somebody wants to kill me? What for? I don't believe that you were the target. Who then? Mr. Holmes, are you all right? I saw the bloke. I tried to catch him, but he escaped. Can you describe the man? Uh, he was thin, about 5'5", five five with black hair and a hair lip. Wiggins, tell us everything you saw. The fellow was watching your place, so I thought maybe he's a client. But then he took something out of his jacket and threw it, smashing your window. I shouted at him and he took off. I grabbed him by the sleeve, but he wriggled out of his jacket and left it. I'm sorry I didn't catch him, Mr. Holmes. You did very well, Wiggins. Now, let's take a look at that jacket. Here it is. Good job, Wiggins. Here's a penny. Oh, thanks, Mr. Holmes. JT are the owner's initials. Let's see what's inside. There could be a hidden message that's been written with some lemon juice. No, don't touch anything else. There are ink stains on this piece of paper. I could read the text with the help of my analysis table if Wilde hadn't already destroyed it. A poem. But what does it mean? This isn't a poem. It's a song called Rally Mohawks. That great moment when America rebelled against England's dominance. Then rally, boys, and hasten on to meet our chiefs at the Green Dragon. And I bet they hoisted a tankard of ale and invented a new nation. Along with deciding if this was the week they got to dump some tea into Yon Harbor. <laughs> Why ever did he keep such a song in his pocket? <laughs> He's so funny. Did he sleep well, Kate? Very well, thank you, Father. Is that wild? Whatever is he doing now? He's transforming you into a legend. Oh, silly man. Kate, what's the matter? Well, I just came by to tell you that I'm going to the zoo with Alice. We'll be having lunch in town. The zoo? What on earth for? <laughs> Perhaps because it is my birthday today? I fooled you, didn't I? Of course I remembered. Here's some spending money. Go and enjoy your special day. All right. I'll go then. Kate. You never do anything right. All right, all right. Come here. I've had enough of you not caring about me. I do care. I've just had a, a difficult night. Yes, Alice told me about the bomb, but you wouldn't. Kate, I... I only want to protect you. You don't understand anything. I wish Alice would adopt me. Don't be ridiculous. I don't know why my parents entrusted me to you. Did they really know you? Kate, come back! Damn it, such a waste. This Alice, I have an odd sense about her. It's as if she's playing with Kate's feelings. This would be a good opportunity to investigate Alice's flat while they're absent. And anyway, it'd be better to visit the Green Dragon Tavern during the evening.
Alice's childhood was spent with her aunt until the aunt's death. Alice was unhappy with all of her adopted families. <laughs> She's spying on me. It appears that Alice sleeps in this armchair, as uncomfortable as that must be. It has no smell. Uh, it has a bitter taste. No smell, a bit of taste. It's a tincture of barbiturate. Alice prepared a gift for Kate. She remembered her birthday. Well, women are good at that sort of thing. A soothing drug to aid sleep. Sarah de Bouvier is Alice's mother. Strange taste in literature. Her full name is Alice Floella Hamilton. Alice used her mother's name to lease the flat. Kate probably sleeps here. This lock is quite new. chair is the same as the one in the photograph above. My distant ancestor, Horace Burnet. William Hamilton. But I know him. He was a bandit who I arrested 20 years ago. Alice is talking with her father, William Hamilton. Alice knows about Zacharias Greystoke, the victim from the bowling club. I solved that crime.
Abraham Lincoln. My word, look at this setup. Alice practices spiritualism. Louis Napoleon Bonaparte. They have to be careful in this den of iniquity. Damn. The attack on Holmes failed. I'll drink to forget that I'll drink. <laughs> Interesting, they have some kind of pass for getting in the <laughs> A man with a head. He could be my attacker. I should find a way I'll to drink to forget that I'll drink. <laughs> Pour me a double. I'm going outside for a cigarette. It's a neat job. Let's celebrate. You can get in. Cheers. Bottoms up. Is the boss at his place? Yeah, he's waiting for you. and go around. They only left this room recently. Clever invention for hiding gambling items in the event of a police raid. The hammer. Jack Cole, I remember him from the raid three years ago. Doesn't look like a key from an ordinary door. It's evident that all of these items were stolen by Jack Cole's gang. It's the suitcase belonging to that fellow with the hair lip. No doubt these things were stolen. Our man, most likely with his family. After moving into our new home. This fellow pawned his belongings. He must be in great need of money. Butler's pawn shop on Lambert Street. He apparently lives near this pawn shop. What's going on in there? You bastard, I'll kill you!
are you? You... you are Alice, yeah? Listen, Holmes suspects something. What are you talking about? You must be more discreet. Your little game with his daughter. No, no, no! Too soft, Holmes! But... you are Mr. Holmes. Why on earth? You see, she recognized you. I expected it. You must live the character. You see... Now you go upstairs right away or I will drive you back to that pub. Understood? And there you are. You've got it. I... <laughs> All right. But seriously, you should take acting classes. I know that you came here to avenge your father. You moved into my building, you've spied on me, and now you prepare your revenge through my own daughter. Don't be such a fool. I adore your daughter. You see conspiracies in everything. I have good reason to. Perhaps you forget what I do for a living. How I pity you. You mistake sincerity for dishonesty. Do you dare tell me that your presence here is accidental? Obviously not. When the opportunity arose for me to meet you, then I came, but not with hatred, rather more with fascination. I had hoped to learn something about my father from you. Some answers as to my identity. When, strangely enough, I find that you yourself are a riddle, even to your own daughter. You shouldn't have involved my daughter in your sick problems. You're only confusing her. It's over. She doesn't know it yet, but I'll be leaving soon. I've finished my business here, and you will never hear from me again. Good. But you better speak to me directly. No being furtive. I had no idea that you could show such a high level of indulgence towards the children of criminals. You... I'm going. Please, I beg you, do not spoil my last moments with Caitlin. Good day to you, madam. Good day, sir. I'm here to see your son. Jeremiah? He's not at home now. Might I ask you a few questions about him? Perhaps we could speak inside. I don't know who you are, sir, but I'll have to ask you to leave right away. Little rascal! Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself. It tends only to evil. Thank you, Father. You are so kind. Those brats are always causing trouble. Now, where are my manners? Uh, may I offer you a cup of tea as a small thank you? I don't know if... Uh, God bless you, sister. My name is Margaret Thorne. It is an honor that God sent you to me. You appear grieved, sister. Is it because of those children? Oh, no. It is my son, Jeremiah. I fear that he is doing bad things, father. How bad? I don't know. He has just become nervous and angry and rude. And he used to be such a nice boy. These days he won't spend any time at all with us. Not even with Janet, his younger sister. He hides himself away inside his room and locks the door. And he won't open it for anyone. And where is your son? I don't know where he is. He hasn't come back from last night. I'm so worried. Perhaps his absence is connected with his job. Where does he work? I don't know if he has a job, Father. I've asked him several times, but he just gets angry and won't speak. Perhaps Jeremiah is being poorly influenced by his friends. I wouldn't know. He never mentions any friends. I am afraid that he could be possessed by the devil himself. He's changed so drastically lately. He won't tell me anything, and he flies into rages and shouts at me. I don't know what to do. Don't distress yourself, sister. You were right to confess. Truly, I... I can feel an evil presence in this apartment. Oh, God! Allow me to search for the demon in this house. God bless you, Father. Bookcase and books, possessed wood and words. Ah! Expel your literary demons. Ah! Wooden door, iron handle, battle the demon, ah! unholy vandal. Oh, Father, please help us!
Window! Window frame! I uh, must protect you from demonic pain! Pain! Uh... Father, it's a demon! Oh, Holy Spirit! Save your pans from demons and poor musicianship! Oh, Father, please help us! Fire and flames! Better for crumpets! than foul-toothed demons. Be gone and bring peace! <laughs> Sister, you saw that the demon has taken shelter in Jeremiah's room. I should go there alone. God save us. Sister, wait for me outside. This fight will be a fierce one. God help us. I'll do what you say. It looks as though this letter was torn up in rage. I should reassemble the fragments to read what was written. It appears that Jeremiah received a threatening letter from somebody known as the Dart. The Dart. He was at the center of a notorious case from 1888. It's over. The demon is defeated. Oh, thank you. Bless you, Father. Now, pray for Jeremiah's soul and give thanks, sister. Goodbye. Lord be praised. Goodbye. Mr. Holmes, you're still alive. I can tell that that displeases you. Oh, a faulty deduction for once. Lestrade, I have two suspects in our case, Jack Cole and Percy Fleming. Can you apprehend them? All right, Mr. Holmes, I'll give the order to the constables. Inspector, we have both suspects apprehended. There you are. They're all yours. No need to thank me. A good day to you, Percy the Dart Fleming. Huh. It's the flopper. Flopper. You're aware of what happened to Baker Street the other night. I'd say I'm a little luckier than that. Well, I don't give a fig. What were you doing two nights ago around 1 a.m.? I was at the White Swan. The White Swan? The brothel that you own. That can't be counted as an alibi. What do I need an alibi for? Does the name Jeremiah ring any bells with you? It's the first time I've heard it. How about this threatening letter that bears your name? Oh, I remember now. A threat? Come on. Just a reminder for him to pay his debts. It's just a small one, and it's a matter of principle. How do you know him? Ah, oh, he's always coming around, begging for odd jobs. But he just talks rubbish. He's off his head. Do you have any business with Jack the Hammer Cole? I have. He sometimes provides my business with goals. But he's stupid. A hot-headed clown. Yeah. I'd be worried about him if I were you. Yes? He told me what you did to his brother. And, well, let's just say he hates you. So, Jack the Hammer Cole, we meet again. <sighs> Why am I here? Don't pretend that you don't know. You're a suspect in the case of an attempt made on my life. Rubbish. Just like the old days, eh? Arresting me on suspicion. You've got nothing. Oh, no. How about the revenge for the trouble that I brought to your gang? And also your brother. Don't you dare mention my brother. Your brother was hurt. It was a regrettable accident. He was in the wrong place at the wrong time. I can hardly be blamed for that. What? You bastard. You're the one responsible for him becoming a cripple. He was innocent. An accident, you say? Oh, I can't wait for the moment that you get whacked proper. 
Quad error demonstrated. <laughs> That's your proof. If I wanted to kill you, you'd be dead already. Do you know what happened at Baker Street that night? I do know, but I had nothing to do with it. And where were you at the time? I was at my tavern all night long. I see. I went to your place and I saw a man with a hair lip arriving to meet with you. What business do you have with him? Business? He's a regular customer, that's all. And what about the suitcase that your regular customer brought to you? What? What are you talking about? Why, the suitcase full of stolen silverware that I found in your secret room? What? How? You search my room. It's not stolen. I often buy a lot of different things and sell them on after. It's all legal. Oh. Oh, I believe you. <laughs> Tell me about the business that you have with Percy Fleming. What? I don't have any business with him. No? Oh. Oh, you supply girls to his institution. He's confessed. Well, he's a liar. It looks like encrypted records. A spintria used in the brothels of ancient Rome. Well, that's rather... Tasteless. Personalized thuggery. How novel. Expensive cigarettes. Hmm, the text is encrypted. If it's Caesar's shift code, it might be easily deciphered. Elementary. It's a notebook filled with debts. And Jeremiah's name is on the list. Get into the cab, quickly! That cab. I should find a way to get inside. We need to get out of here. Lestrade, I'm glad you're here. What's happened, Mr. Holmes? We've come from the abandoned St. Patrick's Abbey. I uncovered a gang of armed bandits there who did their best to kill me. Again? I'll send our best team to arrest them. Well, I doubt that you'll find anyone left, but if you hurry up, you might just find the spoils left over from their burglaries. I see. And I'll be very grateful if you could keep an eye on Mr. Wilde here. But Holmes! Wilde, please try to remember. Yeah, the slightest detail, etc. Well, apart from the smell of those bandits who kidnapped me, yeah, nothing special. And this Jeremiah was spending his time complaining about working for the fart. I think you mean the dark. Yeah, whatever. Jeremiah said that they should all wait till the fart was released. Uh, it makes no sense, right? Mr. Holmes, I'm grateful to you for the opportunity to experience all of these superb sights and smells of criminal life. But I think I've had enough now. What was the reason for Jeremiah Thorne's death? Are you joking? 
Put your deductive skills to work. Self-defense, my dear Watson. That's quite enough, Wilde. I know that you are guilty of the attempt made on my life and of the murder of Jeremiah Thorne. Holmes, you're my best friend. Why are you doing this? Oh, stop all this. The case is solved. You came to my house for the sole purpose of taking my life. In addition, you hired Jeremiah to do your dirty work. And when you realized his failure, you murdered him to conceal any traces of the crime. There's no chance of you avoiding the gallows. Gallows? <laughs> Absolutely not. That would mess up my hair. Holmes, you simply have to face up to it. You need to have a serious discussion with Kate about her origins. I can't. No more excuses. She will learn soon enough that Alice is leaving. This other hidden secret. She will not forgive you. She does not need to know why. No? So she will blame you for Alice's departure. Is that what you want? No. I, I certainly... It's as Kate said, I, I always do the wrong thing where she's concerned. Now look here. I'll take care of your case once we're back at Baker Street. Cabby, why have we stopped? The road to the square is blocked, sir. Why? There's been a bad road accident. Oh, splendid. We'd better hurry. There may be injured who need help. He has stopped breathing. There is no heartbeat. His pupils are constricted, but they are moving. He is still alive. I must act quickly to save him. Thank goodness. This man will live. you so much. Ah! I see no visible injuries. Perhaps I could use Amelia. Oh, my head. Please move to a safer area, sir. Please! Help! Somebody! I would have died if not for you. Thanks for your help. Oh, my shoulder! I'm a doctor. Will you allow me to look at your shoulder? Oh. Thank you for your help. Ah, it hurts! There's some extreme bruising. No bones appear to be broken. 
I think that an improvised bandage will do for now. One moment, and I'll fetch what I need. Thank you, Doctor. Holmes, it appears the police have arrested someone. Perhaps it is the person responsible for this disaster. What do you make of this accident, Holmes? Let me go! You're talking nonsense! Insulting a police constable, eh? That's quite enough. What's happening here, constable? Mr. Holmes, this gentleman here is the fellow who built the scaffolding which collapsed and caused this accident. That ain't true! How were you hurt? This hammer hit me on the leg. How? It flew out from the scaffolding I put up. When the damn thing collapsed, the hammer flew out and coshed me leg. You were standing over there at the time. Oh, all right. Yeah, that's right. So it would not have been possible for him to bring the scaffolding down, Constable? Perhaps it was poorly constructed. Oh, right. Yes, of course. And what made it fall? Perhaps it was you, waving around that rotten stick of yours. You'll wind up getting a taste of it if you carry on like this. One moment, Constable. The scaffolding here has been entirely dislodged. It is unlikely that this disaster could have been the fault of this gentleman. Allow me to inspect the area. And if you could possibly be of use close off the surrounding section do not grant anyone access nor allow them to leave is that quite clear absolutely mr Holmes. this accident is a little unusual i need to concentrate on the details i must include all the participants in the accident sequence might i ask you some questions regarding the accident it all happened so quickly there was an explosion and my horse startled and threw me back against those wardrobes. Good day to you, sir. Would you mind answering some questions? I'm investigating this accident. Are you the driver of this car? Yeah. I was transporting vegetables from my farm to the London market. What can you tell me about the accident? I don't know. There was a collision. I felt the ground. I come over all dizzy. What did you collide with? Um, that contraption up in front of me. He stopped all of a sudden, and I tried to avoid him, but I wasn't quick enough. Do you have any idea what might have caused this cab to stop so sharply? No, no idea. The old gas lamps in this square have been upgraded to electricity. A puddle of water and electricity. A deadly combination. I won't be able to release it with my bare hands. That's it. Might I ask you some questions regarding the accident? Please. Not now. I'm in shock. A dead driver. Another victim of the explosion. Celebratory bunting. This horse was blinded by the flag, causing it to bolt into the window. The overturned lamps may well have caused the fire and explosion. This cab was set on fire by the explosion at the lamp shop. A common fate of an uncommon location. This mechanism played a part of the accident, I'm sure of it. That's it. The rope holding the bunting was torn apart. A large section of it is now missing. That's it. The technical cab's sudden halt caused this disaster, but the lamppost fell down afterwards. So why did the cab stop? This man was armed with a revolver. Webley, I suspect. Rasco. Yes, I know him. He's a small-time local criminal. Some... Some kind of solvent. A piece of fabric drenched in solvent. Mud. Oof. Smells bad. Underground Electric Railways Company of London. The electrical charge which affected the technical cab came from here. 
Holmes, I was looking for you. I have an idea about the accident. Never mind. This one is murder. What? What? You? You're a murderer, You're eh? off your head. Are you sure, Holmes? Oh, yes. A murder and an accident, because the killer, by electrocuting the cab, created this chaos. And so this multiple crash is now our great chance. Our great chance? Of what, Holmes? The culprit could not have planned for this to happen, don't you see? And it is possible that he is still here due to the prompt arrival of the police. Now I see five men who could be our murderer. Let us take a look at the map. Constable, I suspect three people here. Take them to Scotland Yard for questioning. As long as I don't leave empty-handed, all's good and well. I know that look, Holmes. Have you found something new? That's right. In order to trap the cab, the killer must have known the precise route it would take. Or even, that could suggest the cab must have set out not far from here, in this very street, perhaps. Remarkable. Holmes, I'm terribly sorry, but I must go to the hospital now to help tend to the wounded. I understand, Watson. But don't forget our earlier discussion. Hmm? About Kate. Mud. Oof. Smells bad. A workshop. Saleable items are produced here. Mud. Oof. Smells bad. It looks as though the carpet was placed here intentionally. An old access point to the sewers. An old access point to the sewers. The iron wall of the... So, it was the goal of Rasco's gang to rob the bank. The thieves have opened almost all of the deposit boxes. They must have taken a great many valuables. This vault belongs to the Bank of England. The thieves have opened almost all of the deposit boxes. They must have taken a great many valuables. An old map of the sewers with a red cross. Metal rings. They're used to hold the barrel in one piece. A banknote. Dry, so it hasn't been here very long. All of the licorice has been eaten. Murad. Quite a popular brand of cigarette. This cigarette stub is dry. It was discarded fairly recently. The tobacco's aroma is still strong. It's, uh, sweet and nutty. These barrels are empty and unsealed. The thieves used these barrels for the loot, which they then threw into the water. I need to warn Lestrade about this. Ah, oh, Mr. Holmes, we have a slight problem. What happened? One of the suspects, Mr. Reginald Butcher, has escaped. It was after we asked him to put his belongings in the evidence room. I'm sorry. How did he escape? Um, he hit me in the face. Took me by surprise, you know, otherwise I, uh... Of course. That's all? Just before he left the yard, he shouted, Sorry, I'll come back later. Sorry, I'll come back later. He could have said that without punching me. Is Inspector Lestrade here? No, he will be absent for a couple of days. Can we keep this incident between us? A book. Karl Heinzen's 1848 De Maud, with a bookmark. This terrible passage is apparently appreciated by Garrett. Electrical wires.
whiskey. Of poor quality. Murad. Quite a popular brand of cigarette. Thick leather gloves. They're probably insulated. My life has changed thanks to Pastor Gordon and my faith. Reginald Butcher is fond of sweets. This pen is an expensive one, but it isn't new. Reginald Butcher had problems with his job. The initials M.B. This letter from yesterday perhaps explains why Butcher was in such a hurry. At any rate, I now have an exact address. The belongings of the victims, Rasco and his acolyte. A police report about Rasco. He's only a minor criminal. A Webley revolver. A standard deck of playing cards. A normal pocket knife. Rasco is fond of licorice. Huh. The licorice was found both at the sewers and amongst Rasco's belongings. Good day to you. My name is Sherlock Holmes, and I am assisting the police with their investigation. I'm Benjamin Fowler, and I was arrested by mistake. I swear it. You have not been arrested, Mr. Fowler. You are here as a witness. Oh, but I saw nothing. I swear. Let me go. Could you tell me what you were doing at the scene of the accident? I was working on the square's statue. I work for the council. I swear it. Do you ever work with electricity? Yes, sometimes. I repair electric lampposts, but I'm not a specialist. I swear it. It's new, isn't it? And complex and dangerous. I understand. Mr. Holmes, I know you're a great detective and you understand me, so please let me go. I know nothing. I swear... Yes, you swear it. I know. Mr. Fowler, does the name Rasco ring any bells with you? First time I ever heard it. I swear. But your tattoo resembles his. You are in his gang, are you not? Um, um, uh, no. It, it was a long time ago. I already forgot. I swear it. I just picked a few pockets for him when I was a young fellow. But I ain't proud of what I did. All my family, my parents, my brothers, dogs and cats all died when I was a lad. I wouldn't have survived otherwise. Good day to you, sir. My name is Sherlock Holmes. Thomas Garrett. Why am I here? <coughs> you are a witness to murder. Of course. Well, it wouldn't be the first time that the police jailed an innocent man in order to close a case. No one has been charged yet. Yet. <coughs> Did you perhaps see anything in particular during or after this disaster? Yes. I saw part of your bourgeoisie burn up and explode. It was spectacular. Why did you remain in the square? Why not seek shelter? Like the rest of the sheep. There were some wounded comrades, workers. I wanted to help them. You have a severe cough. Are you suffering? It's only a cold. <coughs> Why not be honest with me? You are spitting up black fluid. Ah, well observed. Yes. I have enough coal dust in my lungs to fuel an entire London district. You were a miner, then? Since the age of 13, yes. At the Newcastle Mines. Fifteen years of hell. Those were bloody times. But now it's over. I don't want to die in those holes like my father and my brothers did, in order to line the pockets of the rich. <laughs> do you have any electrical knowledge? How do you know about that? Are you a mind reader? There are electrical wires amongst your belongings. Clever. Yes. 
I'll teach electrics to my comrades, since I'm currently without paid work. I'm self-taught, so we're not as dumb as you might think. And I don't want to work for bosses anyway. Merrill Butcher. Admission file at Karolinska University Hospital in Stockholm. Mr. Butcher's wife. A young woman lost her life. Mr. Reginald Butcher, I've come from Scotland Yard. Might we talk? All right. But not too loudly. She's finally asleep. Is she your daughter? My pretty little Mel. She's very ill. Now look, I'm sorry I ran, but I had to see Dr. Blowberry today and the policeman wouldn't listen. Don't worry. I understand now. Can she be cured? It'll take a long time, but I'm confident that we'll win this fight. I can't bear to think otherwise. Yes, probably just a question of money. What are you talking about? It's a question of willpower, and my daughter will win. I do hope so. Although the treatment at the Karolinska University Hospital is very expensive. Ah, um... Yeah, it's our only hope. Thanks to the good Dr. Blowberry, she finally has a bed. We're going out next week. It's our last chance. Do you have children? Yes, I have a daughter too. We'd sacrifice our lives for our children, would we not? Yes. Of course, yes. What do you do for a living, Mr. Butcher? I... I work at the office of the Underground Electric Railways Company. Then you must be familiar with electrical devices. I am indeed. Why do you ask? It is of no consequence, but tell me, what are the reasons behind the problems you are experiencing at work? Problems? What do you mean? You have already received a written warning. Yes. I'm often late to work. My boss doesn't understand my situation. It's difficult since my daughter became ill. I see. Coincidentally, we found one of your company's cabs in the square where the accident occurred. Really? Why was it there? I have no idea. Do you? No. But a week ago, we had a technical cab stolen, along with its tools. Do you think that could be the one? It's possible. Mr. Butcher. Shh. She's finally asleep. I knew you'd return. You should go to Stockholm with your daughter. You will save her. I've made my decision. Leave now. You understand? I was forced to do all this. Perhaps you were. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. Goodbye. Holmes, at last you're back. We can't find Kate. What? She went for her lesson, but the teacher says that Kate never arrived. Mrs. Hudson! She's gone out to ask around the neighborhood. Kate! She was writing something here. Kate took her diary. What happened here? Why would she take her suitcase? Why was it left open? She took all of her favorites. They packed her things and left. I don't understand. What's that? The sound came from Alice's room. Alice! Kate! Kate! Where are you? You never do anything right! I've had enough of you not caring about me! You don't have to anything! I'm a challenge to the door for me!
Where is my daughter? Your daughter? You don't have one, Mr. Holmes. You never did. My God! My daughter, what did you do to her? What you could never do. I made her happy. I don't care what you think. Where is Kate? You fool. You're useless to her. Why even bother? Ah. Holmes, stop that. I'll make her talk. We don't need her. Just use your skill. I'll take care of her. Portrait of Alice's father, William Hamilton, and some items required to conduct a seance are missing. The lead goes to the cemetery. Watson, keep an eye on her. Kate, what did she do to you? Of all others. Felled by bullet. Alice brought them to perform the ritual. Alice brought them to perform the ritual. Those candles have been alive for almost three hours. That's where Alice's father was buried. Go to the old cemetery. Find the crypt. On the crossing. Trampled by feet. Scholar of Rose. Earth digging giant. These writings constitute a single message, a guide. Kate! Kate! Oh my god. Alice's father mummified. It's Alice's father mummified. Storm lamp. A map of British rivers. Madam Destiny. Alice keeps her father's belongings in this room, even the canteen from his boat. Alice sleeps here. Alice is not merely peculiar, she is mentally ill. I hope Kate didn't see this. Kate's suitcase. Why did she leave it here? Kate's diary. I can't believe that Alice made my little girl go through all this! Damned woman!
Holmes. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes. Well, you have to understand, he is your worst enemy. But because he so loves to hide behind the mask of his dubious morality, he would never kill you all. Holmes. <laughs> Holmes. Holmes. I'm certain that he never understood you. everything now. Why did it have to be like this? The dynamics of an asteroid. Work by Professor James Moriarty. Young Kate. star with an extremely precise carving. That's a ribbon from Kate's hair. Kate met her true father. I need to find Alice. I'll make her speak this time. Professor James Moriarty. Because I could not stop the death, he tightly stopped for me. Marriage held with just ourselves. Immortality. It's blocked from the outside. <laughs> what? Alice! Accept your death, you fool! You witch! Let me out! Free Kate! <laughs> Come back, witch! your head, Sherlock. This is the only way to get out of here. Moriarty must have set up an astronomer's riddle here. Hold on, Kate. I'll find you. Watson! Holmes? She tricked me. She... Where's she gone? Watson, where? I... I, I don't know. She left saying that she had to go and see a lady. A Mrs. Destiny? Madam Destiny, she's a boat. What? Over there, Watson. She's abducted, Kate. I can't believe it. She's a lunatic, Watson. She made a room for her dead father, and now Kate is with her.
Stay here and hold on to the boat, Watson. Kate! Kate! Where are you? Kate! I'm here! Just jump! Alice! I'm afraid! I know, but you'll be all right! Look! It doesn't burn! Come on! Kate! Oh my god, no! My God, ask Watson. I was lied to all of my life. Do you have any idea how that feels? No, Kate. I know what evil is. You, you have a good heart. Confusing her, you mad witch! You're tangling my casework with her life! You! You sent me away! When I'm home, we fight all the time! You're ashamed of me! No! No, living at Baker Street can be dangerous. Remember the bomb! It isn't possible to escape destiny! The Rasco gang didn't. Holmes failed to reveal their murderer. Their death was their destiny, Kate. Kate, don't listen to her. And Holmes will be murdered himself. I have foreseen it. I may be killed one day. It's the risk that I take, but my word helps to save other lives. Really? And albeit? And Orson? You save lives? No! You enjoy taking lives! You can't save me either! Kate, you'll be safe with me! I'll protect you, I care about you! How can you trust him? He killed your real father, Kate! It was his life or mine. I had no choice, Kate. See? Everything is determined! Remember the sign! Our meeting! The ceremony! Kate, no, no. How can... How can this suddenly mean more to you than your childhood? See? It is time! <laughs> the next life awaits us! No, Kate, she would make the boat crash to kill you. She knew that you would hesitate. I don't care. I don't belong anywhere. You belong with me, Kate, with family. was the devil's daughter. Over here! Hurry, the boat's going down!
I'm sorry too, Kate. 